Good morning, St. Matthews. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again. I want to say on be first giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, who inspires me every day. I greet you on behalf of the faculty, staff, students, alumni, and members of our board of trustees, to include our own Reverend Beverly, uh, good morning on behalf of Bennett College. Ladies, please understand that you started with the very, very best at the very, very top. She didn't say, introduce herself, she introduced everybody else. But please, may I introduce a member of our board of trustees, the Reverend Arnetta Beverly, who also serves as a senior pastor for this church, Reverend Beverly. <laughs> Thank you so very much for, for, for inviting us and having us here in our home church this morning. As you all can see, there's nothing more to be said. I was going to introduce the class. She's already done that. I was going to introduce the alumni. She's done that. Maybe I can introduce the choir. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Because at Bennett College, we love everyone and we recognize everyone has a purpose in developing us. Well, members of the faculty and staff, please stand and join with me with my a few words of remarks to St. Matthew's. All members of the faculty and staff, Bennett College, would you please stand at this time? Ladies, continuing students, Miss Bennett College, we honor you. Ms. President and Vice President, members of the cabinet, to our alumni. We are here to do as a service that God has ordained for Bennett College that began in the basement of Warnersville's church that now is represented in St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. We are here because we believe in the purpose, the mission, of Bennett College. That is to educate women to go out and be global leaders in this world. We are here because we believe passionately that God has ordained us in this place to do this service at this time. We are here to serve you. So please know that we are genuine in our service to you. So I don't have very much more to say than that. I will end. Thank you very much. You all may be seated. I will end with this piece of scripture. Proverbs 2, verses 1 and 2. And I'm going to paraphrase. My daughter, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Please understand that the world is waiting for your leadership and your guidance. And we have been at college, plan to stretch your mind, stretch your imagination, and prepare you for the world that awaits you. Thank you. Church.
the Lord, he woke me up this morning And I was clothed in my right mind I had the use of my limbs And I was feeling mighty fine Right now I'm happy in my soul Because there's one thing that I know Just one more day One more day One more day Hey! Just one more day The Lord One more day, yes You know he could Thank you, Lord I'm going to say that again The Lord, he woke me up this morning And I was clothed in my right mind I had the use of my limbs And I was feeling mighty fine But right now, I'm happy, happy in my soul Because there's one thing that I know Just one more day One more day One more day Hey! The Lord One more day Thank you, Lord No, he could have But because One more day Yes, Lord Hey, hey, y'all I want to say Thank you, thank you, Jesus Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for your grace and mercy, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. All I want to say is, Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I want to say. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. For your grace. Thank you, Lord. One more day. One more day Just one more One more day Amen. Is anybody glad for just one more day? Just one more day. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. What a joyous occasion it is to be together in the house of the Lord as we welcome new sisters to the Bennett community. To Dr. Beverly, who is my sister, my friend, and she doesn't know this, but she's also my mentor. Thank you for the example that you set and the love of God that you show to all people. And thank you for the gracious invitation to stand before you today. To President Fuse Hall and to the Bennett College family, good morning. And to my little sisters, 
It is my joy to greet you in the love of Jesus Christ and to welcome you to Bennett College and to the most exciting adventure you will ever have. Take full advantage of everything that's, op that's offered to you and may you grow to be the women that God created you to be. Our scripture for this morning is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. And if you have your Bible, I invite you to read along with me. Again, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15, and I will read from the New International Version of the Scripture. By the grace that God has given me, I have laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone who is building on it. But each person should be careful how he or she builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than that one has already been made, and that has been with Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, the work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what is built survives, that person will receive reward. But if it is burned up, he will suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. The topic for today is to watch how you build. Let us bow together in prayer. Precious and holy God, for the blessing of this day, for your beautiful presence, we give you praise and thanksgiving. Thank you for this opportunity to come together as community to worship you, to praise you, to hear a word from you, and to gain the courage to live by what we hear. Now, dear Lord, breathe on your people. Speak the words of truth and light and send us out into this world refreshed. For this we give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. As a child, we may be, we became familiar with a nursery rhyme that goes something like this. There was an old sow that had three little pigs and she was in a position where she didn't have enough to feed them. So she packed them up and sent them on their way to find their own fortune. Well, the first pig went out and he saw a man with a bundle of straw and he said, Mr. Please give me some straw that I might build a house. And so the man gave him the straw and the pig built a house. And y'all know the story. After he got his house built, a wolf came along and he said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And what did the pig say? Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And so the wolf said, I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your house down. And that's exactly what happened. He huffed and he puffed and he blew his house down. Now, I'm going to give you the version of the story that's less traumatic. This little pig escaped and got away to his brother's house. So when he got to the house, the same thing happened. The wolf came and knocked on the door and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And he said, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. He said, I'm going to huff and puff and I'm going to blow your house down. And that's what he did. He huffed and he puffed and he blew the stick house down. And these two little pigs escaped and went to their brother's house. And when they arrived, they were exhausted from running and getting away from the wolf. And they were securely in the brother's house. And here came the same wolf again with the same harassment saying, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And they said, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And the wolf said, I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your house down. And he did. He blew and he blew and he blew and something different happened this time because the wolf was huffing and puffing and he was blowing against a brick house. And what this story tells us is this little pig was careful how he built his house. Today's story is in context. In the church of Corinth was found in a place that was at the crossroads of travel and commerce. And the people there were interested in Greek philosophy and placed a high value on human wisdom. Religiously, Corinth was celebrated with 12 different temples and its worshipers practiced religious prostitution. The city was well known for its sexual immorality. And with that setting in mind, the Apostle Paul had to give a structure for the church to operate in a world that had lost its mind. 
Well, you see, Paul said that the foundation is Jesus Christ. And for those of you who know him, you know him as the one who loved us enough to leave the glory of heaven to come to earth in this lowly estate. Jesus was the one who limited his deity to this human body so that he might be God with us. Jesus is the one who spoke peace into chaotic situations, and he is the perfect example of obedience. At the voice of Jesus, even the storm needs to cease. He welcomed children and he elevated the status of women. And Jesus scribbling on the ground saved a woman from being stoned to death. And when Jesus touched a life, people were healed. That's the Jesus we're talking about. He's the one that sticks closer to a brother than a sister or a mother or a father. And when you build on Jesus' foundation, you know that your house will stand. So watch how you build. As students giving thought to the construction of your academic house, the scripture is plain in telling us that we have choices in the building materials that are available to us. We either have gold, silver, or precious stones, or we have wood, hay, and stubble at our beck and call. But you have to contemplate how you want your house to stand and what you're going to build it up with. Because you see, if you use the cheap materials that are readily available, like the wood, the hay, and the stubble, Excuse me, it ain't gonna stand. If you build your academic house with the inferior building blocks of cheating, cramming, plagiarism, that's really unwise. So when the inspection is conducted, in other words, when that test comes, your work will be shown for the inferior structure that it is. When you secure a position in the workforce or you take a seat in a graduate program and you are asked to produce the results of the information you should have learned but you didn't learn because you didn't plan your house right, you could end up disappointed. And why are you going to spend your time, your energy, and your financial resources if you're not willing to invest your absolute best in the effort? Watch how you build. Dr. Charlotte Hawkins Brown is one of my favorite people, and she is the founder of the Palmer Institute in Sedalia, North Carolina, not very far from here. She said that the goal of the solid education was twofold. First of all, an education is to raise students' moral comprehension from the petty atmosphere of ordinary life to a plateau of creative thinking and accomplishment. And the second goal is to instill pride and an incentive to do your very best to develop to your highest potential. In addition, Dr. Brown said, yes, you can browse around and pick up a living without an education, but even a mule to be of any good must be trained. The gold, the silver, and the precious stones used to build your future are very costly, and the good thing is they'll last you a lifetime. You may be familiar with the accounts of someone with keepsakes and precious treasures that were unearthed during some fires in, the, in Texas. One woman returned to her house after her house burned down, but she found this cave and there were some treasures in there, some artifacts made of stone, and it was the largest collection of artifacts in Texas history, and they survived the flames because these relics were made of the right material that fire couldn't even destroy. So watch how you build. My sisters, in your personal relationships, take care how you build. You are fortunate to be a part of a beloved community called Bennett College and St. Matthew's United Methodist Church, which in many ways is kind of like a tent that was talked about in a book by, by Anita Diamant. It talks about the tent as a place where women had time to gather as people, to mentor one another, to out from behind the gaze of men in the culture, because in that time period, women were more property than they were person. It was a time for them to educate the younger women on the best ways to successfully navigate time and culture. The tent was the place where those meaningful relationships were built on a foundation of experience and mutual trust. And let me say this as well, not only did the older women mentor the younger women, but I'm so glad that the younger women in my life mentor me. They take an investment, invest not only in me personally, but professionally, so it's, it's a give and take. We, how many of y'all know everything? Amen. That means we can learn from one another. 
because our young sisters have so much to teach us that will enhance our lives and our being. At Bennett College, you will also find friendships that will sustain you through every journey and phase of life, through the joys and the tragedies, through the excitement and the mundane of everyday life. My little sisters, as you expand the scope of fellowship, be careful how you build. Listen to the additional comments of Dr. Charlotte Hawkins Brown. She said, clothes often fake the man. She also said, never let a fool kiss you and never let a kiss fool you. <laughs> Watch how you build. It is our desire that you have a wholesome, balanced college experience. Because multiple of us went to college, and how many of you had a good time in college? Yes. Yes. And you're glad the Lord spared you some of that. How many of you glad the Lord spared you some of that good time? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to be real with you. It's our desire that you have a wholesome, balanced college experience. There are many wonderful people in our community who are looking for friendship, and some of them are looking to have a future with you. That's beautiful. And there's some other folk out there, too. So watch how you build. National Public Radio featured a conversation with Daryl Woodson, who is the author of Original Game, an interview with an old player. He reminds us that there's a game out there that seeks to involve you. The game is structured to enhance the lives and the livelihood of other people at your expense. The players seek to draw you into activities and lifestyles that have dire consequences. So please watch how you build. Greensboro may be quite different from your hometown, but please remember everybody in Greensboro ain't from Greensboro. And they bring their attitudes and their habits with them that are common to their experience. So please, please watch how you build. A few years ago, in 2001, our nation experienced one of the deadliest tornado seasons in, on record. On April the 27th, 122 tornadoes took the lives of 313 peoples in five states. The Insurance Institute of Business and Home Securities constructed a $40 million storm lab in South Carolina to test the ability of a house to withstand the devastating winds of tornadoes. In this test, y'all walk with me with your imagination. In this test, there were two houses that were outwardly identical, and they were both subjected to the same conditions. As the winds intensified, the house on the left began to show the ill effects of the storm. The shingles began to peel off, the roof began to cave in, and all of a sudden, the house was completely destroyed. The only thing that was left intact, unharmed, was the well-constructed foundation because it was able to withstand the force that the wind threw at it. Well, the house on the left, on the right, ex experienced the same conditions, which included winds up to 95 miles an hour. Yet the results were dramatically different. The house on the right only suffered a little bit of damage. Only a little piece of the siding was missing, but the rest of the house was completely unaffected by the unrelenting storm. So you may wonder, well, what made the difference? Well, the researchers revealed that there was a variation in the construction of the two houses. The house on the right was built with tiny little metal strips every few feet, and these metal strips were anchored to the foundation. So when the wind blew, the house was equipped with something unseen, come on now, to hold on to. What is true of this illustration may be true of us. It can be said that we don't know what we'll do until the storm arises. And sometimes you don't know how well your plan has been constructed or your ministry is put together or your career is planned out until you get the test. Something unseen to hold on to. That's a sermon right there in itself. Listen. There was a woman who was being tailgated by a stressed out woman on Washington Street, you know, right there at the corner of Washington and Bennett. Now, I didn't see this, but I heard about it. Now, suddenly the light turned yellow in front of her and she did the right thing. She stopped at the crosswalk when she could have accelerated and gone through the intersection. But the tailgating lady behind her was furious. She was honking her horn, she was using inappropriate language, and she was so frustrated because she couldn't get through the intersection, and she dropped her cell phone and her lip balm while she was driving. Okay, 
But while she was still in mid-rant, fussing and going on, she heard a tap on her window and she looked up and there was the face of a very serious police officer. The officer asked her to leave her car and put her in handcuffs. She took her down to the police station. She was searched, fingerprinted, photographed, and placed into a holding cell. And after a couple of hours, the police officer approached the cell and opened the door, and the released driver was escorted back to the booking desk where the arresting officer was waiting with her personal effects. And the police officer looked her in the face, and she said, ma'am, I am just so sorry. You see, when I pulled up behind your car and heard you blowing your horn and saw the inappropriate sign language that you were using, and I heard you cursing up a blue streak, I was concerned. Then I noticed that you had a crystal angel and a peace symbol hanging from your rearview mirror. <laughs> it gets better. You had your Bennett Bell's Do It Well license plate holder. You had your blessed and highly favored bumper sticker. You had your Bennett College honor student car magnet and your what would Jesus do keychain. <laughs> Naturally, I assumed the car was stolen. <laughs> I'm just saying. As Bennett women, not only do we have high expectations of ourselves and each other, but this community has an expectation of who a Bennett woman is. We, don't, don't get me wrong, we are not perfect, but we strive for excellence in every area of life. And when we fall short, we are woman enough to just own it. I messed up, please forgive me, give me another chance to get it right. We are Bennett women. We seek balance of mind and body and spirit. We are women of character, accountability, respect, excellence, and sisterhood. We are compassionate, we are engaging, and we are engaged. As I was researching, I found a website that describes who we are as women, and it's entitled, The Rules for Always Being a Lady. Stay classy, always smile at strangers, Say please and thank you. Chew like you have a secret, which means with your mouth closed. <laughs> Shy away from gossip. Be intelligent but not a know-it-all. Class is defined by elegance and dignity and not because you know all the nastiest words in the book. Hello? Hold your head high but not your nose. And this one is so important. Do not RSVP to drama. As old people say, don't start none, won't be none. Don't RSVP to drama. Because a lot of times what we say about somebody else is more reflection of our character than theirs. Keep that in the file. Remember that there's a fine line between being honest and being rude. Please don't confuse the two. Never sacrifice your class to get even with someone who has none. Let them have the gutter and we gonna take the high road. As you enter into this community or continue your, your journey as a bell, may you embrace the spirit of Bennett College. May you know that you are loved and supported more than you can honestly imagine. Know that your value is immeasurable. There's only one person who has the right to determine your value and that's the one who made you and anybody approaches you with less than what you know you were, keep it moving. Don't even answer, keep it moving. May you be that woman of dignity and strength and character that God has created you to be. Watch, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Proverbs 14.1 is clear. The wise woman builds her house and the foolish one tears her own house down with her own hands. So watch how you build. St. Matthew's family, the Bennett family and the family of God, it is our pleasure to just say good morning and to welcome you. This truly is the word of God for the people of God and I invite you friends of God 
to watch how you build. Amen.